Hello and welcome to this Red Gaming Tech video of myself and Marta, where of course I'm here as always with the latest from the tech world in the last 24 or so hours. And today I'm going to kick things off with some good news for those of you who are perhaps interested in purchasing an SSD in the near future. And what we actually have here is a very interesting report from Digitimes, which of course will be linked in the description below this video, which basically states that not only have they noticed a decline in prices for NAND flash over 50% over the course of this year, we're going to be seeing them continue to decline into 2019 itself. And according to comments from the Adata chairman Simon Chen, NAND flash manufacturers have not slowed down their expansion of their capacity, which has obviously has contributed to this, and 2019 could witness an even bigger drop in prices than we saw already this year. Of course, numerous manufacturers, Toshiba, SK Hynix, so on and so forth, have already taped out 96 layer 3D NAND flash products, and these could be entering production in the first half of next year. So this obviously could impact the prices of what we already have, the 64 layer NAND flash. You know, as those new products come out, the prices of the quote unquote older product is obviously going to be reduced as they try to shift the stock and make it end of line, that sort of stuff. However, a bit of sort of... Mm, Got a mixed news here as the same report does claim that DRAM prices are to remain largely flat throughout 2019. Which is probably not what you wanted me to say. You wanted me to say, hey, guess what, guys? DRAM is also going to go down in price. But uh, at least according to this report, that is not on the cards, unfortunately. But now we're going to move swiftly over to some... NVIDIA news as we have a couple of things from a couple of different generations of graphics cards. As what we actually have here is a Gigabyte model of the GeForce GTX 1060 with the GDDR5X memory. And we actually have a picture of the box thanks to videocards.com. Now sadly all we have is a picture of the box but it is still confirming that yep this is a thing. It is going to be part of the G1 gaming series from Gigabyte and does picture or should I say states that it has a GDDR5X memory. An upgrade from the GDDR5 that we saw previously. So still a lot is unknown of course, you know we don't know for example how this is going to affect overall performance but it is expected to clock much higher when overclocking. So it's going to be interesting to see how this performs versus its brethren. But speaking of performance we actually have a benchmark allegedly for the GTX 2060. Now I actually spotted this on Reddit and it is just listed as NVIDIA graphics device on the chart itself, but you can see it right at the bottom of the performance, which is for 3840 by 2160 standard quality, coming in just beneath the RX Vega, and of course the GTX 1070 Ti. Now obviously it is an assumption, a rather large assumption that this is the 2060, but you can see the benchmark for yourself and you can also see the Reddit thread of which I found this, which was thanks to the user Crytoy, so thank you very much to them for sharing this as on the r slash Nvidia subreddit. So if this does actually ring true, and obviously is actually the RTX 2060, it basically means that it is fairly equivalent to a 1070 Ti. Now obviously we don't actually know if the 2060 is going to have the RTX nomenclature of course it is going to be on the lower end of this particular class or generation I suppose you should say of graphics card so it does beg the question of is it actually going to have any ray tracing or that sort of stuff. Obviously there is DLSS as well to bring down the, the hardware requirements of ray tracing itself but I wouldn't be surprised to see it done as RTX without the actual ray tracing. I don't know if they'd release it as a GTX 2060 or not so that might confuse things in terms of branding. It's tough to say, but I wouldn't be surprised to see it strip down some of the features that we do see in the 2070, 2080, and of course, the 2080 tie. But we're going to move swiftly over to Intel now. Now what we have here is their earnings presentation for the third quarter of this year, and despite all of their woes, they still did really well. They had another record quarter with record revenue and profits. They posted a quarterly EPS of $1.38 and their revenue was $19.2 billion, billion, which is an all-time high and is actually up 19% year over year. We saw things like the Client Computing Group, Internet of Things Group, non volatile Memory Solutions Group and Data Center Group all achieving record revenue itself. 
Actually, I have a bit of a statement here from their earnings call, which reads, quote, stronger than expected customer demand across our PC and data centric businesses continued in the third quarter. This drove record revenue and another raise to our full year outlook, which is now more than $6 billion from our January expectations. We are thrilled that in a highly competitive market, customers continue to choose Intel. In the fourth quarter, we remain focused on the challenge of supply and the incredible to market demand for Intel products to support our customers' growth. We expect 2018 will be another record year for Intel, and our transformation positions us to win share in an expanded 300 billion total addressable market. So let's talk actual specifics. As I said, the quarterly revenue was $19.2 billion, which again is up 19% year over year. Data-centric revenue grew 22%, and PC-centric revenue grew 16%. Quarterly GAAP earnings per share, again EPS was at $1.38, which is a 47% increase year over year. And year to date, they generated $22.5 billion in cash from operations, $11.2 billion of free cash flow, and returned $12.6 billion to shareholders. Now they have, unsurprisingly, on the foot or the heels, should I say, of these rather positive results, raised their full year revenue outlook to $71.2 billion. GAAP EPS outlook to approximately $4.52 and yeah they're just doing rather well for themselves so as much as they have kind of been struggling a little bit due to the 14nm shortage and of course delays of 10nm and obviously AMD have you know been definitely challenging them on the epic sun you know the server front gobbling up that market share all that sort of thing intel are still sitting rather pretty to say the least so yes again amd have done very well for themselves as well you know very much challenge intel and cause them kind of wake up and release you know the ninth generation you know, with ryzen doing really really well for themselves and obviously as i've already said challenge them on the server front with epic it is still intel and despite all of their woes and all of their troubles they are still doing really well Will we perhaps see a decline for the next quarter? It's really hard to say. Obviously, Intel feel very confident that, nope, they're going to continue to do well and, of course, they upped their expectations to reflect that particular attitude. So we're actually going to finish things up with a statement here from Qualcomm. Now, obviously, I've spoken a few times on the ongoing legal proceedings between Qualcomm and Apple, and now, basically, Qualcomm are claiming that Apple owes them $7 billion dollars in unpaid royalty payments and they actually made these comments during a court hearing in california now obviously you know apple don't have any patents or anything like that that they have to pay license fees for obviously qualcomm still gets reimbursements and royalties da, 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 all that sort of stuff now obviously apple are not just going to take this line down like yep you're right here you go here's seven billion dollars good sir they are currently disputing that particular figure and they are stating that Qualcomm charges unfair royalty rates. Now, obviously, this has been a rather bitter dispute between the two companies with Apple last year saying that, hey, Qualcomm participate in unfair business strategies that prevent competition, and they withheld nearly $1 billion in rebates as retribution, and after they halted these royalty payments, other suppliers did so as well. And Apple are even further going on to say that Qualcomm is actually forcing them to pay for the same patents twice, and you might scratch your head and go, hang on, how the hell are they doing that? Well, they have to pay when Apple uses the Qualcomm chip in an iPhone, and then again through patent royalties. And Qualcomm is, of course, arguing, hey, this is legal, basically. So obviously, Apple aren't best pleased by these allegations and are pretty much saying that, hey, Qualcomm, you're trying to deflect the allegations of double dipping here that I just discussed. And also they're saying that Qualcomm should not be able to demand a license on patented technology if that same tech is built into baseband chips, which are then, of course, sold to people like Apple and other smartphone manufacturers. So far, this battle is ongoing, but it is, again, a rather bitter dispute between the two companies. Well, Qualcomm has tried to halt the import of iPhones, which are powered by Intel modems, by lodging a complaint with the US International Trade Commission, and obviously now they're saying, hey, you owe us $7 billion. So yeah, they're pretty much doing the legal equivalent of kicking each other in the shins at this point, but obviously there's no verdict from the court at present. Obviously we're gonna keep an eye on this particular court case, see how it progresses and so on and so forth, because regardless of which way the court does rule, it could have some pretty significant ramifications for the industry. Um, that being the smartphone industry as well, and obviously if it's Qualcomm that ends up being found to be in the wrong here, then obviously it could ripple to PC as well. So, yeah. 
It's going to be interesting to see, because obviously, even if it's not a direct impact, you know, one thing affects another thing, which affects another thing, that's kind of the nature of a ripple effect. Anyway, so it's definitely going to be one to watch, I feel, this particular court case, and uh, it's only going to be heating up, I think, if this is how things are proceeding at present. Anyway, that is me done for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Your support really does mean a huge deal to both myself and Paul, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.